Hello you guys, tonight we are here at Disney's After Hours event at Magic Kingdom. This event runs from 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. And I am here with my four-year-old daughter tonight, so we will see if we're able to last till 1 a.m. But I'm gonna take you along the entire night, share everything that's included, everything we're able to accomplish, and I'm really excited. We haven't done an After Hours event in several years, so we're gonna go get all checked in, get our wristbands, and get this night started. Here's a quick look at everything that's included tonight, so it gives you a quick rundown of all of the food and beverages that are included, entertainment, merchandise, as well as all of the characters and attractions that are included in this event. One thing I'm very excited about is that the Enchantment Fireworks Show is included in this event at 11 p.m. So if you come early enough, you'll be able to see not only Happily Ever After, but also Enchantment, which is really cool. When it comes to food and beverages, what you get included with this event is select beverages, which is typically bottled water and Coke products. Products. You get popcorn and ice cream novelty. So that includes the Mickey ice cream sandwich, the Mickey ice cream bar, and the strawberry ice cream bar. And you can find those on different carts throughout the park. And all of that is unlimited, which is pretty, pretty spectacular. And then the only restaurants that are open during event hours is the Main Street Bakery and Casey's Corner. So definitely come early and grab a bite to eat if you are hoping to grab dinner before the event. Those are the only two locations that are open during after hours. But it is nice that you can still grab a corn dog or some kind of pastry item from the Main Street Bakery. All right, it is seven o'clock, which means we can officially check in to the after hours event. And typically you would be at the front entrance and that's where you would check in and scan and get your wristbands. But if you are already in the park, there's different locations throughout the park that you can get your wristband and check in so you don't have to go back to the very front entrance. So we are gonna grab our wristbands here in Tomorrowland and officially get checked in. around from thing to thing during this time. So, we are gonna head over to the Dumbo Playground. I'm gonna let Ellie just play and hang out because that is one thing specifically that I'm not gonna spend my time in the playground. It probably won't even be open <laughs> during the after hours event. So, being really strategic with your time and how you're gonna utilize those three hours of very, very minimal crowds and very minimal wait times. Churros with the chocolate sauce. So good. 
but we're gonna hang out here for a little bit longer. It is now 9.20, so we still have about 40 minutes until after hours officially begins. So at this point, we're just waiting for the park to kind of clear out, and we're just gonna hang out here and drink our strawberry limeade slushy and our churros. All right, it is 9.45, and there are still a good amount of people here. So I'm assuming a lot of people will probably stay a little after 10 o'clock. So I think we're gonna start making our way back to Fantasyland. That way, right at 10 o'clock, we're ready to go and we can kind of have our first ride picked out. 9.52, I don't know if you can count this as our first official ride of the night, but we're gonna go on TV. It is 10.02 after hours has officially begun. So I am checking out wait times now. And I mean, everything is looking not bad right now, but I'm eager to see within the next hour how these wait times drop even more. Because yeah, 25 minutes for Jungle Cruise, that's gonna go down. Winnie the Pooh, that's definitely gonna go down. Let's see what else. Um, Peter Pan, that'll definitely go down. Uh, I'm eager to see what Seven Dwarves ends up being by the end of the night. Because right now, it's still at 45 minutes, you still have all of the guests who jumped in line last minute. Um, so that's kind of why that line will be a little bit longer for a while. Same thing with Space Mountain. And... Tron, same thing. So Tron is a standby line tonight. So no virtual queue, nothing like that. It's just a standby line, which is really awesome. Unfortunately, I won't be able to ride Tron because I'm here alone with my four-year-old. So <laughs> I have no one to do rider switch with. So I won't be able to do Tron, but I will definitely keep you updated on what the wait time is throughout the night. So right now it's a 40 minute wait standby. And everything else is looking either like it's a walk-on or the wait time will go way down later on in the night. So we are going to head over to Little Mermaid. That is the ride that Ellie has been begging to go on and I've been making her wait until tonight to do it. So let's go. All right, here we go. Let's go. You ready? Are you excited? We just did Ariel twice. We stayed on for round two. Ellie would ride that ride all night long if I would let her. <laughs> but I should have mentioned to you earlier, my goal for the night, especially being here with my four-year-old, my goal is not to ride everything. Like I know that's just not even possible in three hours, even with low wait times, just because I'm here with a four-year-old. <laughs> so that is definitely not the goal for tonight, but we are just gonna enjoy and see what we can do and just enjoy the things that we can. At 10.30, here's the line for popcorn, drinks, ice cream. <laughs> but I think people might be forgetting that there's little carts all over the park handing out this stuff. So do not feel like you have to join that one specific line. If it's super long, you can find these carts anywhere throughout the park. So we are going to hop in line for the horsey ride, as Ellie calls it. Okay, hey, ready? Can you climb up? Good job! Here we go! <laughs> ride number four, because we can count Little Mermaid as two rides, right? So this is ride number four. Power cells. All right, let's go. Out those cells will all be power. They got fine time to send me a boost.
Ride number five. We just got off the people mover and enchantment started about seven minutes ago. So we're gonna head over to the front of the castle and watch the rest of the show. So look at this very empty tomorrow land right behind me. So So with the free popcorn and drinks and ice cream, all you have to do is walk up, show your wristband, and tell them exactly what you're wanting. And again, it's unlimited. They will hand you as much as you want. So if you want to take home a giant bag of Mickey ice cream bars, go for it. If you want to take a dozen bottles of Coke back to your hotel room, <laughs> Go for it. And one really nice thing about the Enchantment Fireworks show during After Hours is seven minutes into the fireworks, we walked right up to basically the front of the castle and there was plenty of room. So that is a huge perk if you do not enjoy <laughs> staking out a spot and you do like being right in front of the castle, come to the After Hours event because you get a front row seat and you can basically just stroll right up no waiting, there's plenty of room, you've got plenty of breathing room, there's not people like right on top of you watching the fireworks. It was just a really great experience to be able to walk right up, again, seven minutes after they started, and there was plenty of room. I checked the wait times again, and surprisingly, Mine Train was down to a 25 minute wait, now it's back up to a 45 minute wait. I don't know what that's about, but, Interestingly enough, Tron was up to a 40 minute wait, now it's down to a 25 minute wait. So they kind of flip flopped. I don't know, very interesting. But another really great reason to do after hours is that specifically with Tron, you don't have to worry about purchasing an individual lightning lane or joining the virtual queue. At 25 minutes, you could ride two or three times in the night if that's what you wanted to spend your time doing, you know? And the wait time might even go down from 25 minutes. I don't know. I'm gonna check back in, you know, every 30 minutes or so just because I'm very curious. So we're gonna head over and do Big Thunder Mountain. I don't know, Ellie has never done it before. She's tall enough to ride, so we'll see. With it being a walk-on, I thought now would be the perfect opportunity <laughs> to give it a try. Ellie's chowing down on that popcorn. Oh, yeah. Is it good, girly? Yeah. <laughs> and we are just strolling in a pretty empty frontier land. Ride number six, Big Thunder Mountain. And Ellie's first time, we will see how this goes. <laughs> Well, Ellie was not a fan of Big Thunder Mountain, <laughs> which I should have known based on how she responded to Slinky Dog on our last trip, but every trip her reaction to roller coasters has been different. So I really truly had no idea, but she was not a fan. So we are gonna go to Winnie the Pooh now. That is what Ellie is requesting. And because this is a walk-on and you know, <laughs> we're not really waiting in line for this, I thought why not? If she wants to hang out here and play for a minute, you know, we always have to skip over these. So, yeah, why not hang out? Okay. 
It is 12 o'clock, one more hour to go. These past two hours, they really have flown by. And we are headed to Tomorrowland Speedway. Now this will be ride number eight. We are moving at a pretty slow pace though <laughs> between the gazillion potty breaks that we've had to take with Ellie. I'm not even kidding. Like it's been a ridiculous amount of potty breaks tonight. And you know, we sat and enjoyed our popcorn for a while. And you know, I mean, we've been moving at a slow pace. So I feel like if I was here alone or <laughs> if I was here with my husband or a friend or you know, I would be able to do way more than what I'm doing here tonight. But this is still a blast and it's just a different kind of way to experience the parks, which I love. You driving? Yeah. Ah! <laughs> We're basically just bobbing side to side on the track. <laughs> <laughs> okay, another ride wait time check-in. I just double checked the app and Tron is still at a 45 minute wait, but Mine Train is down to a 15 minute wait at 12.20. So it seems like if you hold out till the end of the night, wait times are gonna go way down as compared to spending, you know, 30 to 40 minutes in line for mine train at the beginning of the night. So maybe save it for the end. Ride number nine. This is actually one that we have never done. I have never ridden Astro Orbiter. So neither has Ellie, but I'm really excited for this. We just wrapped up Astro Orbiter, which is way faster than it looks, I might add. That was, I know I mentioned, our very first time ever riding that ride. Can you believe it? Crazy. One thing I wanted to talk about was how I'm not seeing many strollers, meaning there's not many little kids here. It's mostly adults, teenagers, older kids, you know, families, couples, um, and very few strollers. I mean, there's definitely some. I'm seeing, you know, quite a few but not a lot. But don't let that scare you away from bringing your toddler, preschooler, you know, just because the event is 10 p.m. to 1 a.m., you know, which is scary. Like, you know, thinking about having a two, three, four-year-old here at this event, that's a late night. But here are a few of the things that we did to kind of set ourselves up well. So what I would typically do is make sure to sleep in on your after hours day and just plan a chill day, whether that's a resort day, time at the pool. We popped into Magic Kingdom this morning, but we were only here for a couple of hours and then came back for a really early nap time back in the room. I let Ellie nap for as long as possible. We just hung out in the room. And even after she was done napping, I let her watch a show for a little while. Like, we just chilled out. We didn't try to get back to another park. We weren't racing around the resort to try to do different things. We weren't going to Disney Springs. Like, we legit were just hanging out. <laughs> And we didn't come over here until right at seven o'clock. So we were essentially back at our resort and spent a good chunk of our afternoon in our room from one to six. So I really tried to set us up well for a very late night. So there are things you can do um, to make this really enjoyable with little kids. That kind of leads into the next thing I want to talk about. The other thing I wanted to talk about is the value of this event and basically what you're getting for the price because I'm not gonna lie, it is expensive. These tickets are pricey. Tonight was $175 with our annual pass discount. I was able to get my ticket for $145. Still very expensive, but even at that $175 price point, if you compare that to a one-day ticket at Magic Kingdom, and then let's say Genie Plus is $30 per ticket on top of that, you're looking at a pretty similar price point 
at that point when you add on Genie Plus. So obviously when you come to an after hours event, there's very little weight. I mean, almost everything is a walk-on with the exception of Mind Train, Tron, and some of the princess meet and greets were around a 15 to 20 minute wait tonight. But other than that, everything was a walk-on. So you're not having to worry about Genie Plus. You're not having to book lightning lanes. You can go from ride to ride to ride all night long and you're not having to try to strategize or like plan ahead or like this event you truly can just show up and that's not the case for Disney these days like you really have to plan it out in advance and put a lot of thought into understanding Genie Plus and what your first lightning lane selection is gonna be and then you know making sure that you're stacking your lightning lanes throughout the day and you know I mean it can it can be a lot especially if you haven't been to Disney in a while or this is your once in a lifetime trip and you've never been before you know I think the after hours event is really valuable in those kind of scenarios to where you compare it to a full day at Magic Kingdom plus Genie Plus and maybe you decide to do this instead. So I think that's where After Hours really gets its value. I hope that comparison is helpful. Obviously you're only getting three hours of park time as compared to, you know, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m., you know, a full day. But what you can accomplish in those three hours, you could essentially do the same thing, if not more, in that three hour after hour window than you could at a full day at Magic Kingdom. So obviously you're also not getting the parades, you're not getting certain characters, um, different experiences like the train or you know things like that. So there are a few things that are not included. If that doesn't bother you and you're more concerned with going on rides and attractions, this may be a great fit for your family. But that is a wrap for tonight. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me tonight. This was so much fun. I am shocked Ellie has lasted until it's just about 12.50, 12.55 right now. So I think we're gonna head out. But thank you guys so much for coming along with us tonight. Make sure that you are subscribed if you are not already. Give this video a thumbs up and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys. Bye Magic Kingdom. Ellie's saying no. <laughs> I know. We only have a couple more minutes, so we wouldn't be able to ride anything in that time frame anyway. So we are going to go ahead and head on out.